Hello everyone. Welcome to my series of lessons on the physics of sailing. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only and are only intended to introduce basic topics for beginner cruisers in light to moderate wind conditions. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can replace taking accredited courses covering all aspects of basic cruising from qualified and experienced instructors, and gaining experience by starting slowly and increasing your knowledge and experience over time. You are responsible for obtaining a marine weather forecast and limiting your activities to weather conditions within your own level of experience and ability. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. In the last lesson, we saw how lift is generated in aircraft and how that also applies to drive in sails. In this lesson, we'll apply this knowledge to derive the two basic principles of sail trend. But this lesson is only for basic cruising students. I won't be discussing more advanced sail trim until a future lesson, and I won't be discussing all the fine details of racing sail trim. We saw in the last lesson that lift and drive and sails comes from Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's take a quick look at the vectors again so we can keep this in mind. Looking down on the boat, here is the initial wind velocity vector A approaching the leading edge or luff of the sail. And here is the final deflected wind velocity vector C. So vector A plus a deflection vector B equals the final vector C. Vector B is the action in Newton's third law of motion, and the equal and opposite reaction is the force driving the sails and propelling your boat forward. The airflow along the sail is not quite so smooth though. It may look more like this, with turbulence and vortex shedding towards the end of the sail. But the total deflection along this sail, vector B, is the sum of many small deflections along the sail. So to maximize the driving force in the sail, we need a smooth flow of air being deflected along the surface of the sail for as far along the sail as we can get it. So we want to trim our sail so there is little to no turbulence in the airflow along most of the sail. Turbulence is the bane of lift. If there is turbulence in the airflow, you lose all those nice deflection vectors, which are the action. And if there's no action, there's no equal and opposite reaction to drive your boat forward. So, now let's look at how we can trim a sail to minimize the turbulence. What's one important thing we can notice about this diagram? To maximize a smooth deflection of the airflow along the surface of the sail, the leading edge of the sail, the luff, is pointing directly into the direction of the oncoming wind. The oncoming wind needs to flow smoothly and evenly onto both sides of the sail to eliminate turbulence in the airflow for as far as possible along the surface of the sail. So this is the first and most important principle of sail trim. You need to adjust your sheets and other controls to get the leading edges of the sails pointing directly into the direction of the oncoming wind in order to obtain a smooth flow of air as far along the sail as possible to maximize the driving force in the sail. In this basic introduction, we'll just look at how to adjust your jib sheets in order to keep your foresail properly trimmed. But how do we know when we've achieved this goal? How can we tell when the luff of the foresail is pointing directly into the invisible oncoming wind? We can look at the telltales on the leading edges of the foresail. If both the inner and outer telltales are flying smoothly, then the wind flow must be approaching equally and evenly onto both sides of the sail. You can also notice there are upper and lower telltales. Adjusting the jib sheet will affect the lower telltales, but it won't have much effect on the upper telltales. But how to adjust the upper telltales and how to adjust the mainsail are topics for a future lesson. Here, we're only trying to understand the basic principle of sail trim using the jib sheets. Okay, now let's look at how we can adjust the jib sheets to get both the inner and outer telltales flying smoothly. We'll talk about the points of sail in a future lesson, but in this diagram, we're sailing upwind on a close reach. As you can see, 
The sail is trimmed so that the luff of the sail is pointing directly into the direction of the oncoming wind. Let's look at what happens if we ease the jib sheet out like this. I'm exaggerating this so you can more easily see the effect. Here, there's plenty of air pressure on the outer side of the sail to keep the outer telltale flying smoothly. But there's turbulence in the airflow on the inner side of the sail. So the inner telltale starts to flutter in that turbulence. The turbulence reduces the efficiency of the sail to generate drive. So to get the inner telltale flying smoothly again, you need to harden your sheet back in. So when you see the inner telltales fluttering, harden the sheets in. But if you harden the sheet in too much, now you can see there's turbulence in the airflow along the outer surface of the sail, and the outer telltales start to flutter. And even though the inner telltale is flying smoothly, the airflow along the inner surface of the sail will become turbulent sooner, and that will also reduce the efficiency of the drive in the sail. So when you see the outer telltales flutter, ease your jib sheet out again to get the outer telltale flying smoothly again. A good memory aid for adjusting your jib sheet is adjust the sheet in the direction of the fluttering telltale. If the outer telltales are fluttering, ease the sheets out. If the inner telltales are fluttering, harden the sheets in. This is our primary goal for sailing upwind on a close reach. You can constantly adjust your sheets as the wind fluctuates to keep both the inner and outer telltales flying smoothly. But when you're sailing to an upwind destination and your jib sheets are hauled all the way in, there's no room for jib sheet adjustment if the wind shifts. In that case, you need to adjust your course to stay pointed as high up into the wind as the wind direction will allow. Let's see what that looks like. Here, you're sailing as high upwind as possible with your jib sheet hauled in all the way, and the wind is flying smoothly onto both sides of the sail. This is called a close haul because you're sailing as close to the wind as possible with your sheets hauled in all the way. Let's say the wind shifts to your port like this. Then there will be turbulence on the outer surface of the sail and the outer telltale will start to flutter. Again, I'm exaggerating the diagram so you can more easily see the effect. Now you can turn up wind like this to get the outer telltale flying smoothly again. But then if the wind shifts back again like this, the inner telltales start to flutter, and you need to turn out of the wind again to get the inner telltales flying smoothly again. Let's say the wind shifts to your port again. You have another option. Instead of turning up wind, your outer telltales are fluttering, so ease your sheets out like this. Turning up wind and easing your sheets out both move the sail in the same direction with respect to the wind. They both get both your telltales flying smoothly again. The adjustment you choose depends on your destination. On a close reach, you adjust your sheets to account for wind shifts. On a close haul, you adjust your course. And the memory aid for adjusting your course on a close haul is just the opposite of the memory aid for adjusting your jib sheet on a close reach. If the outer telltales are fluttering, turn into the wind. If the inner telltales are fluttering, turn out of the wind. You can practice this until it becomes second nature. Okay, sometimes you may be sailing on a close reach, but even if the wind stays constant, you may wish to change your course to a new destination. When you change course, harden the sheets to turn upwind and ease the sheets to bear away. Why do we do this? Let's take a look. Here, we're sailing a close reach. Then, we decide to adjust to a new course upwind. When we head upwind, we harden in our sheets. Later, we decide to return to our original course. When we bear away from the wind, we ease our sheets. Essentially, to change course, we turn our boat underneath our sails and adjust our sheets to keep our sails in the same position with respect to the wind. Now, the wind in this diagram is the apparent wind, which is the wind we sail in. But you'll have to wait for my next lesson on the true and apparent wind for a complete explanation of this. Okay, I said there were two basic principles of sail trim that we can derive from Newton's third law of motion. The second principle is how deep of a draft should we set in a sail? The draft is just the depth of the deepest curve in the sail, like this. But how does this affect the physics of Newton's third law of motion? Let's look at the vectors. 
Here's the vector A plus deflection B equals C for a relatively shallow draft. And here's the vector A plus deflection B equals C for a deep draft. Again, I'm exaggerating the diagram so you can more easily see the effect. With a deeper draft in the sail, the wind is deflected through a larger angle, so that means there's a larger action vector B. With a larger action, there's a larger equal and opposite reaction, which means a larger driving force in the sail. So, for light winds, we want a deeper draft to get more drive from the sail. Of course, there's a trade-off. A deeper draft will also create more drag, but nothing comes for free. For stronger winds, when we're sailing on a close hull, we harden the sheets to flatten the sail so we can point the boat higher up into the wind towards an upwind destination. We don't need such a large draft because we'll get all the drive we need from the higher wind speed. But don't over flatten the sail. Remember, we need a deflection in the airflow to generate drive. If there's no draft at all in the sail, then there's no deflection in the airflow. And that means zero action, which again means zero equal and opposite reaction and zero drive. But as wind speeds increase a lot, that can start to overpower the boat and heel over too far. In a future lesson, we'll learn how to depower your sails to stay safe. Okay, my last comment here is that these principles of sail trim generally apply to sailing upwind. When you're sailing downwind, the physics is still the same. It's still Newton's third law of motion driving your sails. But you can't trim your sails quite so efficiently with the wind coming from behind. When you're sailing downwind, you'll want to ease your sheets out a long way for both your main sail and foresail, but not ease so far out that your sails are loosely flapping and beating in the wind. If wind speeds start to increase a lot, you may wish to reef your main or even take it in altogether. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. I covered a lot in this lesson, so watch it as many times as you like to get comfortable with it all. I hope you enjoyed this video. These videos are all the lectures I give on board my Cruise and Learn trips for the basic, intermediate, and advanced cruising courses for the Sail Canada course standards. And hey, to all you instructors out there, feel free to show these videos to your students if you think they're useful. Thanks everyone for watching, and stay safe on the water.